Welcome to another video by me, Zayford Beeblebrox, aka the British Tech Guru. And today I want to revisit the Waveshare GPS. That would be this thing. Well, that's the Pi and the GPS is underneath it. Anyway, this is actually a GP, does that come under? No, it hasn't. Okay. This is actually the L76D, but it works just like the L76X, but this is the D, because this sits underneath a Raspberry Pi. Anyway, um, the software I used the other day I had downloaded from GitHub. Let's just say it wasn't very good. It didn't give me all the information I needed. Uh, it would give me, let me see, it would give me time, date, I think it would give me date, and it would give me uh, GPS location, but it would not give me speed, it would not give me compass direction and it would not give me magnetic variation and it also gave me very curiously two other coordinates it gave me a location it gave me a Google location and it gave me a Baidu location well I took that software apart I looked at it and oh my goodness that software had been coded so horribly badly it was very obtuse and it had a, and the baidu and google locations were manufactured in the software they bore no relation to reality i have no idea why somebody would do something as silly as that but somebody did so I stripped all that out of the program and then coded my own uh, information thing, information re reader, because I read the GPS sentence that starts with dollar sign GNRMC. And that contains all the information I can possibly ever need it does not contain altitude, that would be another string. But there's no point whatsoever in having altitude because that just tells you how high you are above sea level. Well, there are things called mountains, so that would be utterly worthless. A far better system for maintaining altitude would be bouncing radar off the ground it's expensive but it has been done that's how some of the uh, World War II missiles managed to keep off the ground uh, then there was then there's the barometer that is again subject to mountains but if you say that the highest mountain is what 27,000 feet well I don't think I'd get a drone up there before the battery ran out at least not the kind of drone I'm building at the moment. Maybe drones later, yes. And the uh, the other method would be, well, two other methods, more interesting. One would be what the cruise missile does, which is to bounce sound waves off the ground. Now that has the effect of reducing forward speed because the drone has to be able to receive the sound as it bounces off the ground so it has to be within range so limited there um, if the you know, sound travels at 330 meters a second so if you're traveling at 500 miles an hour you have to be very close to the ground in order to get an echo back can't be more than 100 feet and you probably won't be traveling at 500 miles an hour either. I haven't done the calculation. I'm not going to bother because it's not that interesting. 
just to, just for a YouTube presentation. Uh, so the cruise missile travels fairly slowly and uses echolocation off the ground. Uh, we've all heard it in uh, in the Gulf War. We heard that warbling warbling sound as the cruise missile flew past. Anyway, that's that. The other method is laser. And I notice there are laser modules available, but they're limited to about 40 feet off the ground, which is utterly useless, because trees are taller than 40 feet. And heavens, there are trees that grow a couple of hundred feet. So you need to be at least 100 feet off the ground. And in fact, that is exactly what the, uh, what the cruise missile does. It stays between 180 and 100 feet. Um, okay. Now I'm going to show you what my new code does. Following my normal format, I'm going to open the program. I'm going to open Sony. It's just because nobody, nobody watching might have seen this before. All right, I'm going to open the PyPico. There we go. This is the interesting one. Now, this is up here is all stuff that, eh, that was coded by somebody else. Right, this, this bit, this is what I have coded. This uh, just improves everything so much. Now, I'll open. The other files, right? No, I haven't touched uh, 176 I7 L76 config. There was no point. Uh, this one, init py, that is just crap. There's nothing in it. I have no idea why that was included in the package. L76 py, yes, that's what I'm working with. So I'll open that. Now most of this I haven't touched. This lot I haven't touched. That I haven't touched. This. This bit. I have rewritten totally. Because this bit was so bad. This bit was so badly coded. It was utterly meaningless. So what I've done here. Is I have received the string from the. Uh, from the. GPS. Now, the big thing about that, that took me a couple of days to figure this out, and I was going, why isn't it reading a string? Why isn't it working? Okay, well, it's not string. Well, it must be something else. So I was trying all the different data formats, and I was thinking I must be the thickest person in town. Finally, I tried a type statement, and I found that it was byte. Well, that was easy enough. Convert it to string, which I've called stringy. I just data decode UTF-8. Boom! It's now a string. Find the length of the string. Then find where dollar $GNRMC is. Delete everything in front of that. Delete dollar $GNRMC and the comma after it. Make the rest of it into a take. Take that out, then find the the point where the next dollar sign is, which will be the beginning of the next the next data sentence, and delete everything from the, from and including that dollar. Boom! That gets me the data sentence. Then Python has a really nifty thing. I can convert a list, I can convert a string into a list. And this happens to be comma separated. So all I could do is split on the comma. Bang! There we have a beautiful list. I have time. I have a valid flag. A if it's valid, X if it's not. Latitude, hemisphere, north or south. Um, longitude, hemisphere, east or west. Ground speed in knots. Direction, and that will be 0 to 360. 
or um, 0-359.99. The date, variation from magnetic heading, and a checksum. Bang! All I've got to do is return that. And this is another beauty of Python. You can just return a whole load of values from from the uh, from the function without having to include them in the function themselves. Wonderful. Anyway, so that's there. I'm really happy with that. Now, let me show you what this thing actually does. So I'll move that up there and we will run it. And we will wait. Oh, did I press run? Yes, I did. There. We can see time, latitude, latitude, ground speed, zero, compass direction, 27.25. Today's date, uh, no magnetic variation, curiously. Maybe the uh, um, the GPS doesn't, uh, this particular thing does not pick up the magnetic variation. It's no big problem. Uh, the big thing is I've got all the data I need. So we'll stop this. Now we've seen all that. That's all excellent stuff. Um, you're probably curious about the other file, so let me open that. It's not really very interesting, so I'll just open that. And that will be config. And so I'll bring this down here. And that is the entire of the config file. As I said, nothing very interesting. Nothing worth writing home about. So, turn you back to the studio. Having seen all that, that was a real step forward, wasn't it? Yes, I like it. I'm very happy with that. So, we now have working GPS that can be used for drone navigation. Now, we can build that into a drone, but the first thing I need to do before that is work out altitude. Now, I do have a barometric pressure sensor which could be used for altitude and I could set it um, as soon as I set the drone going uh, I could read the current barometric pressure and then maybe go up about 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, however long. Uh, that would work for a brief amount of time unless we had sudden barometric pressure changes. Uh, that would work. Yeah for a few minutes. Not, an, not a perfect solution, but it's a solution. But the big takeaway today is this is how the GPS works. I have got worthwhile data from it. And even Waveshare couldn't point me toward the right software for this. I had to write it myself. Or rather take somebody else's crap software and decrapify it. Is that a word? It better be, because I just made it up. So decrapify somebody else's software. And my God, they should be ashamed of themselves writing the garbage they did. And how can anybody write something that comes up with fictitious values and expect to be treated seriously? Oh, my goodness. Ugh. I give up on some people. Anyway. If you want to see my code, look me up on GitHub. I'm British Tech Guru on GitHub. I'm British Tech Guru on Twitter as well. God knows why I'm on Twitter, but I am. And you'll find me mostly haranguing British politicians. And given that uh, <laughs> they had a Prime Minister that... Um, Looked and so looked, sounded and acted like Mr. Blobby. Uh, yeah, they're due for a lot of um, leg pulling. Anyway, so there we go. That was the GPS unit, and it is working. And I am happy with the results. And I'll see you again. This has been another British Tech Guru presentation by me, Zaphod Beeblebrox.